to finalize it, I think we answered most of the questions, but you see here that some of the things, one of the questions was why some of the mitzvot, some of the things are explicit. It says in the Torah, don't cook a deer in his mother's milk. But it says it three times. It says it three times. Why does it say the same mitzvah three times? So obviously here we learned there's a certain thing that's explicit. It says we're not allowed to eat meat, meat and milk. But it says the same verse three times. Why? Because if you look at what Chazal says, it says it's written three times because there's three separate mitzvot from the same verse. One, you're not allowed to eat it. Two, you're not allowed to cook it. Third time, you're not allowed to enjoy it. Meaning that if you want to go work as a chef, you're not allowed to work as a chef in a non-kosher restaurant. Why? Because you're not allowed to cook or eat or even enjoy, make money out of non-kosher food. So if you own a non-kosher restaurant, you must get rid of it. You, mu- you are not allowed to be a cook or make any money out of non-kosher food. Not allowed. That's why that specific verse is written three times. So there's something called exegesis, where the, 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 the sages understand multiple messages from the Torah. And this is how the Torah is endless. Now, this is also uh, helps with the whole argument that we had last week about art scroll. I don't know if you guys have been following, but uh, apparently this is uh, some of the uh, reshaim of the world uh, sometimes have a keep on, sometimes have a hat on, sometimes they think of themselves as tzaddikim. So last week we talked about how to tell people you're not allowed to learn from art scroll, aside from being stupid and ignorant, it's gava. It's gava. Why? Because art scroll has made it easier to learn the basic pshat, the basic meaning of Gemara. It doesn't give you any major secrets. You're not going to become a Kabbalist from learning uh, art scroll. You're not going to become Moshe Rabbeinu from learning art scroll because of how... No, you're going to learn the basic pshat, the basic literal meaning of the Gemara. What is the Gemara trying to tell me? Basic meaning. So some guy that started learning Gemara six months ago, now I'm not serious, I'm not even exaggerating here. He actually wrote an article about a month ago. It said, here are the rules of how to learn Gemara. I started learning Gemara six months ago. Now, immediately, anyone that has a little bit of uh, something should at that point say whatever he says, I'm not doing. Why? In order to teach you first have to learn. You can't tell me you learned how to learn in six months, my friend. You can't. You can't teach me after you've only learned for six months. I remember I used to train all different guys that worked for me for the Series 7. The Series 7 is a question, uh, a, um, a series of questions, 265 questions, that you must answer over seven hours. It's a seven hour test, not an easy test. Passing grade is 70. So I would train my guys how to pass this test. Certain things you need to know, certain things you need to focus on, and so on and so forth. The funniest thing is that sometimes I would have some of these guys, they would just like barely, you know, pass their test, pass, get a grade, they pass their test, they got a 70, 71, 75, whatever they got, and a week later they're trying to tell me how to run my business. It's funny, it's little kids, you know, it's like a little, you know, a little three-year-old kid you look at him like you can't you know you can't be upset at him he's a little you know he's three problem is some of them were 30 so you can't really you know it's silly but it's the same thing here the guy started learning six months ago is telling people these are the rules of what you need to do I learned from Chachamim from Tzadikim from Nevonim from all these different people and he wrote first rule don't use art scroll first rule don't use art scroll so now I said what I said last week, if you guys remember, we made a clip out of it, which is obviously, this is stuyot, this is nonsense. If you have the ability to learn with a rabbi that's going to oversee you, definitely use regular Gemara with Rashi. But if you're learning without a rabbi, if you're learning, if you're brand new, you're Baal Tshuva, you don't know how to learn Gemara yet, you don't know everything yet, you're just learning on your own, you must use art school. Using, not using art school is stupidity. Why? Because what ends up happening is that you learn Gemara, and you get to the wrong conclusion. And now you continue building on it, but it's wrong. So that's what happened to this generation, 
is that a lot of people think that they're smarter than what they really are, even if they're in yeshivas. And they get to the Gemara, they don't learn what Chazal actually said, they decide what they said. They make the laws, they make the things, and they build on the wrong conclusion. So what ends up happening is that you're putting, it's like putting seasoning on rotten food. No matter how much seasoning you're putting on it, you're still going to get food poisoning at the end. It's rotten. You understand? So now when you get to the wrong pshat, the wrong basic understanding, you're guaranteed to make genom bigger. Guaranteed. Why? Because you're building on the wrong foundation. It's never going to turn into right. It's always going to be rotten. So when you learn art school, at the very least, what happens is that you know, if you study it carefully and you read everything that it says on the page, most likely, not 100%, most likely, you're going to arrive at the correct pshat, the correct basic meaning. Which means that anything you build on it will be built on a solid foundation. Doesn't guarantee that everything you're going to say after that is going to be right, but you have something to stand on. So anyone says otherwise, is in essence telling you that anytime somebody teaches Gemara, Rabbi teaches Gemara, he's telling you the Pshat. He's telling you different things. No, no, no. If he's telling it, I don't want to hear it. I want to only learn it on my own. So this is also wrong theoretically. Because Rabbis teach Gemara. You're his Rabbi, teaches Gemara. He tells you what he read. But he said, no, no. If he's saying it, I don't want to, I want to learn it on my own. I want to arrive at my own conclusion. So already it's, this is theoretically incorrect. But aside from that, what's really, really wrong about this is that when you have the wrong conclusion, it usually stems from the wrong place. You don't have right to correct teaching. So this guy wrote this article. We, say, we explained ourselves, as you know, and now included. I don't mention his name. I'm not trying to ruin anybody's life. He's not the only one, by the way. Um, this, plan, this is a common thing. This battle has been going on for two decades. He's not the first one to mention this. But again, Somebody made a mistake, no problem. I don't mention names usually unless I have to. But nonetheless, I said this and it came out. Apparently the guy that wrote the article saw it and he decided to say, here's, he made a sure, a recording of himself. Here's why your own Reuven doesn't know how to learn. And he makes a seven minute recording of him repeating himself 18 times, insulting me and pretty much murdering me in public. Now, Baruch Hashem, this is good for me. It's good for my inner shaman, good for my tikkun. It's no problem. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not crying overnight for this. But this is Chaval. This is someone that just, he thought he knows Gemara. He thought I had to teach you Gemara. No, to, to learn Gemara is already high level. To teach Gemara, that means you not only know how to learn, you know how to teach. Giant. You even know all the laws. You're giant. You're Moshe Rabbeinu of this generation. Teach Gemara. Shrecha. Not only does not know how to learn, he doesn't know the basic law, Malbin Pnei Chavero Berabim, En Lo Chelek Laolam Abba. David HaMelech says, someone embarrasses somebody else in public, has no share of the world to come. So this is, Avera Goreret Avera. Why? You said Lashon Ara about Ochkol a month ago. You didn't like the Musar I gave you, the same day you wrote it, I sent the guy a Musa, I told him, listen, you're wrong, you're not, you're not doing right, you should take this thing off. It's Lashon Ara. Aside from being theoretically wrong and practically wrong, and it has, Archko has, Gdolei Ado signed off on it. You have videos of, of Moshe Feinstein, of um, Rav uh, Kanievsky studying from it. Kanievsky studying from it. Rav Steinemann studying from it, from Archko. Rav David Feinstein has a whole interview talking about how great it is. The Gdolei Ado is signing off on it. You little peon, roach, that started reading the book, started learning how to read six months ago, are saying everybody's wrong because somebody told you something that you misunderstood. So you didn't like the Musari that I gave. I told him, listen, this is wrong. This is Lashon Ara also. You're going against Gdolei Ado. What does he do as a response? He destroys me. He goes, he makes, he calls the shiur, Yaron Ruven. So don't, don't misunderstand. Yaron Ruven, no rabbi, no babkis. Yaron Ruven doesn't know how to learn. 
And he goes seven minute recording insulting me. And in case, since he only has three subscribers, him and his mother and some other friend that he has subscribers to his SoundCloud channel, nobody heard it. So what did he do after? He made sure to type everything he said. And he posted it online again. It wasn't enough to kill me the first time. He wants to mot you mat. He wants mot you mat, like the din karet for, for some mechalet Shabbat. Mot you mat. He wants to kill me twice. So he typed it also. Tembel. 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 Mefagel. Huh? Yeah, he sent it to me. He sent it in the group I was in. But, okay, so now I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you a question. Before Torah, what would I do? After Torah, what would we do? Before Torah, I'd probably go to his house. <laughs> but Baruch Hashem, we have Torah. We have Torah, we thank God for the schut, for the merits. Only thing I responded is something that it says in the Gemara in Baba Metzia. I'm sorry, Baba Batra. Baba Batra 75, 75B. Baba Batra 75B, Hashem it Barach says to a wicked king called Hiram. Hiram. He was a wicked king that thought that he was God. So what did he do? He built a castle with seven levels separated by water. Like Hashem has seven rekeim, seven, he seven heavens, and he's at the top of the heaven. Hiram, Hiram made a castle in essence separated by water in seven ways. So Hashem Barach sent a prophet to him and he says to him this, I looked at you when I created the world. I saw you coming in the future. I saw your arrogance, what you're going to have. And because of you, because of you, I created holes in the body. Why holes in the body? Because how much confidence can you possibly have when everything that you put inside into your body goes out stinky. <laughs> what are you so proud about? You think you're a god. You just had diarrhea last week. You had a headache. You had a broken back. You have a foot uh, fungus. I saw you. You arrogant fool. And because of you I did it. So... I said, this guy learns Gemara, toast for this one, that one, don't use art school, don't use that one. So of course he's going to understand what I mean. So I sent him this little clip. I just sent him, I just sent him the verse with the Gemara page. I'm assuming he understood. What is the response? I'm doing it for Am Yisrael to separate the Sheker from the Emet. I'm saying you don't even read the Hebrew that I wrote you. You don't even know how to read. Because if you knew how to read, you would even know, you'd understand. This has nothing to do with anything. Just shows you your gavtan. You have too much pride. You're making all this stuff. You're destroying people in public for no reason. What happened? What happened, my friends? What happened is is that somewhere along the line, people forgot that yirat shamayim, yirat shamayim, is everything. There's a verse in the Torah. Hashem says, yirat Hashem iotzaro. Hashem has a treasure chest. Hashem has a treasure chest. The whole treasure chest has one thing. You used to have two. You used to have Shabbat. He took Shabbat, he gave it to us. So this is one thing left. What is it? Yirat Shamaim. Yirat Shamaim. I Otsaro. Hashem it barach. In the Gemara it says Shabbat. Gemara Shabbat says the only reason Hashem created the world is for you to fear Him. Not for you to love Him. Love Him comes later. To fear Him, give Him a reason to create the world. When there's no Yirat Shamaim, there's no connection to Hashem it barach. There's no connection. There's nothing. It's babkes. So now, to prove this example of this art scroll, I'll give you a chidush from art scroll. Now, the basic pshat that talks about this Yirat Shamayim in Gemara Masechet Shabbat, page 31, it says, Yirat Hashem i Otsaro. Hashem, everything that he has a treasure chest is the Yirat Shamayim. So it says, what is it like? What is it like, this Yirat Shamayim? It says, even if you know the entire Mishnah, you know the entire Mishnah by heart. No Yirat Shamayim, nothing. It's worth nothing. 
You know the entire Mishnah, entire foundation of all Torah. All of it. You don't know it. You, you have it. You know by heart. You know Tosfot. You know Rashi. You know Art School. You know Bumpkins. You know whatever you want. You know, you have no Yirat Shemaim. It's worth zero. First thing. This is Art School. It says it's Rashi. Basics. He says, what is this like? Uh, tell me, tell me more, tell me more. He says, says, tell me more. He says, B'sha'a she'machnisim adan ladin. Omrim lo, nasata v'natata be'emunah. He says, when someone goes to Shemaim, there's the betin of Shemaim, he died. 70, 80, 120, however many years he goes to Shemaim, the betin of Shemaim. There's no more uh, joking around. You have to pay the bill. They ask him questions. There's a few questions they ask. This first question they ask, did you conduct your business with honesty, with faith? Were you a dishonest person? Why didn't they ask him, did you go to Beknesset? Or were you honest in Beknesset? Why? Beknesset, everybody could pretend like the tzaddikim. In business, there's no pretending. Why? Money. Money. You're not pretending. If you're honest, you're honest in your business. If you're a liar, you're a liar in your business. Bottom line. First question, did you conduct your business? Second question, did you make time for learning Torah every day? Or were you one of those guys that says, no, no, I'm working really hard. I'm going to study later. I'm going st- to make my millions. I'm going to study later. Later, after I have a few million in the bank, I'm going to study all the Gemara you want, Kodarav. I'm going to study all this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give tzedakah. Everybody blames God for their lack of tzedakah. Say, listen, listen. I don't have that much money now. Only make $50,000 a year. Only. Make $50,000 a year. Only. Make $50,000 a year. I can't give tzedakah now. When Hashem gives me a million dollars or 100000 or 200000 or whatever number they have in their little head that makes them believe that's the number that allows them to give tzedakah, when I have that, I'm going to give tzedakah then. This shows that not only they don't understand what tzedakah is, but the Yetzirah has got them on a little leash because he's convincing them that they need more in, in order to give. The reality of it is that the tzedakah of the guy that doesn't have much sometimes is more valuable than the tzedakah of the guy that has a lot. Why? The guy that made 30000 last year, that gave 300 bucks, that gave $100, is going to have much more merit than the guy that gave two million, five million, a hundred million, but didn't feel it. He didn't feel it. He got a billion dollars, so he gave you ten million. Big deal. It's interest over a couple of months. The guy that gave three hundred dollars, you know what? He had to eat a little less this month. You understand? So someone says, no, I'm going to give staka when I have more. Obviously, you don't understand what staka is. You don't understand what, who gives you the money and so on. There's a lot more we need to learn about that. So he gets, next question, did you make time for Torah? You didn't make time for Torah. We have a problem and so on and so forth. He says, let's say you answer. I'm going to fast forward because it's late already. He says, let's say you answered all the questions right. Everything is right. You made time for Torah. You are honest in your business. You were waiting, you were hoping for the Mashiach to come. You have to wait for the Mashiach. It's one of the main things you have, you're being asked. You, you brought kids to the world, or at least tried. You don't have to just stay single because you don't like people. You have to find a bit of You have to actively look for it. Whether you find it or not is not your problem, but it's Hashem's problem. You have to look. You have to try. It says, let's say you answered all the questions good. You got a check mark next to each one. Last question is, did you have Yirat Shemaim? says, if the answer is negative, the judgment's negative. Everything goes to nothing. So now this is Pshat. They give you, says, Gemara says, we want more. Give me an analogy. I'm not, I need more. So Gemara says, okay, I'll give, you a, I'll give you an example. Let's say a guy says to his servant, go to the... Um, what is it called? Uh, attic. Go to the attic and put my wheat. Put all, organize all the wheat. Put it over there. Put all the wheat over there. Servant. Good servant. He goes, takes the wheat. Puts it in the attic. He comes back down. After a few hours, he tells the master, yeah, finished. He says, did you put chumtin? 
did you put the preservative on the wheat? He says, no, no, I didn't put it. So the Baal Abayit says it was better off you didn't do anything. Why? Before you did it, the wheat was fine. It was still in its place. It was fine. It was preserved. It was fine. It's nature. But now you put it in the attic and there's no preservative, which means it's all going to go bad because of you. So it's better you didn't do anything. The Gemara says, that's Yerat Shemaim. The wheat is all the mitzvot. All the mitzvot. You did this. You did Yerat, you did uh, learn Torah. You went. You had Hanukkah. You had Purim. You had Smith. Everything you had. The Chumtin, the preservative is the Yerat Shemaim. It says you have no Yerat Shemaim. It's not worth anything. It's not going to preserve. It's not going to last. This is basic Gemara. You learn it in any Gemara in the world. This is Rashi in basics. Now, the extra part that uh, they add, one of them, a Farshim here, Sfat Emet, and Rashi say, you should know, if you sell the um, wheat in a sack, and let's say it's, uh, I don't know, 50 pounds. But out of the 50 pounds, really, it's 45 pounds of wheat and 5 pounds of preservative, chumtin. You still sell it, it's still honest, it's still right business, it's still kosher business to sell it as 50 pounds of wheat. Not 45 pounds. Why? The Sfat Emet says... Because if it's not for the five pounds of the chumtin, the 45 wouldn't last anyway. So this is art scroll you just learned, Daf Gemara, page 31a. Or at least a few, most of it. Of this last section, the last third of it. What's the chidush that was not in the Gemara, that was not an art scroll, that shows you that now that you understand the basics, you have a basic understanding, it's endless of how much you can build it. What's the, what's the chidush? The chidush is that the chumtin, the chumtin, the preservative, that's art scroll. Meaning, if you have a situation where you're learning Gemara and you get to the wrong conclusion because you don't have a rabbi that's overseeing you. You don't have a rabbi overseeing you. You don't have, you're just arrogant you think that you can get into the you know to your own conclusion Gemara Masechet Yoma page 90 says if you don't have a rabbi it's overseeing you Hashem hates you you don't have a rabbi overseeing you God hates you why does he hate you because you could live 70 years being a kofel without even knowing it why because you have too much gava to check yourself so he says now if you arrive at the wrong conclusion you continue building on it you arrive that this is kosher. In reality, it's not kosher. It's not kosher. But you keep not only eating it, you recommend it to the whole neighborhood. No, go ahead, eat. You start selling it. You start marketing it. You start giving it to the world. You put it on Facebook. You put it on Google. You put, you're put. you selling it. It's not kosher, Bichlal. But you arrive at the wrong conclusion. That's what happens. Art school gives you the right basic conclusion. Basic conclusion. Pshat. That's the Chumtin. Now if, why is it Chumtin? Because if you're getting the Pshat and you're getting to the correct way, it's the same price, it's the same thing, it's the same product, it's, it's still kosher. You still sell it as the same thing. But if it's without it, you're risking losing the whole thing. You risk arriving at the wrong conclusion. Why would you arrive at the wrong conclusion? Because of what the Gemara was talking about in the very same Chidush I just gave you. No Yirat Shamayim. The same Gemara that explained to you what art scroll is, is the same Gemara that told you, no Yirat Shamayim, you got nothing. You got nothing. 